This is a kid's guide to Hanel Spur. Okay, this is the starting spot of Hanel Spur Walk, the G High Campground. Hanel Spur is the greatest vertical ascent of any walk in Australia. You go through this gate and follow the road, and then you have to cross the big river. We're starting at G High and going to Cozzy. We're starting at Dr Forbes Hut, you can see it there. And then we're going across and then up and up and up. Up. And a bit more up. Then up, 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 up. up. And a bit more up. And then up, 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 up. Around a bit more up. And that's it. Started from up there, the little car park, and we walked down here, and then we had to cross the river here. But I didn't film it because I was too afraid. Um, I would drop my camera. This is the start of the walk, right here, and that is Dr. Forbes' cabin. <laughs> cabin. <laughs> I really fell, and I also got a new pocket knife for my birthday. Ching ching, cha! We're camping here tonight and starting the walk up tomorrow. Greatest vertical ascent. <laughs> it's on my eye. If you're going to walk up Kosciuszko, you should do it the original way, stress like he did it. Um, Hannah's is the longest vertical ascent of all walks in Australia. Day one, eight thirty. My mum said it's only 15k walk so little kids can also do it. <laughs> the first bit of this track is really wide and easy. But Dad said for a long and tiring hike lad, you better stop away. Those hills are far too rough for such as you. I think we ought to let her come. I warrant she'll be with us when she's wanted at the end. Um, day one, nine o'clock, 612 metres. We've covered about 400 metres. This is pretty hard getting up this rock. Marley, these hills are twice as steep and twice as rough. Okay, and on the log. Whoa, taking a long time. Now what I can do, get out my pocket knife and cut what's left and remaining of this piece of weed. Hikers are reminded that extensive bushwalking experience and preparation is needed before attempting the spur, particularly above or above the tree line where walkers could run into challenging navigation if it is misty. If you're a six year old, it is not the walk for you. But um, you could be about eight to do the walk. Day one, 10 o'clock, 739 metres. But it's home of the longest gum leaves in the world. We've been going for three hours and this is the first fallen tree we've passed. Like a spitting. I power to get up the hill. Everything. <laughs> Day one, 11.30. 885 metres. Oh, you can see the alpine right up there. And it's only one day away. So when we get to our campsite, we're going to have a night's sleep and then walk all the way up to that alpine and catch the chairs down. Day one, 
Damn, 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 we got This is the track that we're currently walking on. And it's currently downhill. And it's going to be the only downhill for most of the walk. And I love it downhill, which is really fun. Okay, Molly, here you go. And uh, one o'clock, we've just had lunch, and and we're at one thousand meters. I'm wearing this smoky net thing, is because there are lots of bugs around, and they fly into your face and mouth. So this is to protect your face and mouth. <laughs> it's 130 and 1,083 metres. Wait, can I kill myself? So, it's been a long walk actually. Steep. Yeah, it's really actually really steep. Day one, it's three o'clock, and um, the elevation is 1,278 metres. I'm really tired and hot, so, yeah. Got a touch of team or pony in you, Tilda. <laughs> Last call, my is being really steep and I'm getting really tired. This is the way to McCartney Snape walk to primary school every single day. So you just put it on the stopper. Okay, here you go. Do I just put it on top of it? Yeah. Oh, it's bleeding, you're bleeding. See? It's off now. Oh no, it's not off. It's still bleeding. Oh, yep, he's off. No. Oh, you keep him bleeding. Okay. You're bleeding now. Okay. I just threw him away. And kids, if you want if you want to walk up Kosciuszko, then this is the proper way to do it. And look, there's the arrow right where. There. The last two Ks in Tomorrow's Flats was really hard. We've made it! Morris Flat, full 30, 1500 metres. We started at 8.30 a.m. and ended at 4.30 p.m. It was 6.5 kilometres. There's no water on the way up, and I drank about one and a half liters. There's flying water at the campsite. Water, 100 meters. So we might be going to Mount Kosciuszko, which is nine kilometers away. What was your favorite part of the hike? Seeing the really big gum leaves. Ah. Uh. How big do you think those gum leaves would grow if they hadn't dropped off the tree? Very long. Lots of wood at this campsite. We haven't seen a fauna web yet. Morris Flats was named after an old drover that was too fat to make it all the way, so he, <laughs> and he died at that spot. <laughs> On a hike like this, you know how you need to know how to prepare food. This is how to cook Devon peas. Boil, pour, mix, eat. Day two, 7.30. Yesterday we did 1,000 metres up. Today we're going to do another 800. Today it's from Morris Flat 
to maybe go to Zierko. Yesterday we walked eight and a half hours to cover six k's. From camp to the snow, um, above the snow camp, gums we think it's about one kilometre. Down there we can now see G High where we started. Hi guys, I found this really, really beautiful view. I think we're nearly at the end of the snake gums and um, Marley can see um, the sunlight, so yeah. This plant, it smells like tea tree. is one of the signs that um, ha tells you to go this way. <laughs> I think this is a wombat poo. Because it's rectangular. Yeah. If you get charged by a wombat, just before they come... Um, uh, um, before they hurt you, you jump over them and you just land on the other side of them and they just keep on running and running and running and running. If we don't make it to Guzzy, we'll camp at Wilkinson's, even though I don't know where Wilkinson's is. Day two, nine o'clock. We are 1,718 metres. And they look like spitting caterpillars. They're all like bunched up. Um, I just found these on that bush there. And I caught one while it was flying. They all look dead, but they're not. Except James McCartney with Strez Leckie were the first people ever popped up this route, March 11, 1840. In his diary, he left at 5.30 a.m. and got to the top at 7.30. But that was before anyone had cut a track. So how did he do it? He had Aboriginal guides who walked up and down there all the time. Shares like he wasn't first. We don't have any more trees to um, put orange tags on, so now we have rocks too. Day 2, 9.30 and the elevation is 1,832 and we have passed all the blue gums, snow gums, I mean. got these bugs. Because yeah. Marley and I were having a competition who can get the most bugs. It's a bed of soft moss. Day two, 10.30, 1,926 metres we've gone up. We're on the saddle and we're about to cross into Wilkinson's camp. Um, on the map, it looks easy to go up that hill but it's hard walking through all this stuff. So go on this track. The track's flat and we're walking around Mount Abbott. Mount Abbott, not Mount Abbott. <coughs> Molly, film this bug.
could just do it fast. Scratches do a lot. kilometers until Wilkinson's camp which is 800 meters. Shoes and thin gaiters. I think it's better to have boots and thick gaiters. Creek campground and there are other people here. We had a quick lunch and we decided that we're not going to camp here and we're going to keep going to Cousin Oscar. where we came up and then we walked around around down um around that mountain um up around around to here and we school still got about three hours to go That's it, we made it up to the top of Kosciuszko. Kosciuszko. <laughs> <laughs> Kosciuszko! Kosciuszko! Actually, the highest point in the Commonwealth of Australia is actually Dome Argus in the Australian Arctic Territory. That's 4,093 metres. So, 3 o'clock and we're really trying hard to go fast because the, we're trying to get there before the last shows. Guys, and look how much snow there is up there. So much. I was like I could just head first into it, but then it would be really cold and get all wet. In 1997, they changed the official name from Mount Kosciuszko to Mount Kosciuszko. They just added a Z. Do you know why they did this? To trick kids. I am walking so fast because we don't want to be late for the next shift. And Marley's saying hurry up. Good job, Marley. 